Hey guys, stop, 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 Ray here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council, and if you're new to this kind of segment, it's another discussion video, but this focuses on your side deck. This gives you the best options for a breakdown to go against said deck, and this time it is Shadows. We are doing this guide to your side a little bit differently than the older format of the way I used to do it. And let me just give a quick breakdown how this is going to work. We're going to look at each and every single card, pretty much, that we're going to be dealing with, and then going over everything that sides it afterwards so if you already know what they do then that's fine you know because we're just going to break it down and see how they work to get the best analysis on how to countermeasure them but if you're ready in the know-how about every shadow card and you're just looking because you're playing the mirror match then go ahead and skip part of the video um it should only be about like two minutes in just look at youtube's little like you know when it comes out the preview that'll guide you there so these are the shadows not all of them there are six cards here there's eight coming out in the tcg on august i forgot what dates um i keep calling the duelist avid even though it's not the duelist avid we can actually pull up the name i think no we can't pull up the name yet. okay so let's talk about shadow shadow lizard each most and most of them carry two effects and they're a fusion based deck which inherits a giant weakness right there from what you would normally think but they're normal monsters i say normal monsters key word here being not as a normal monster but their effect monsters that they use to bring out said fusions are really busted because they have double effects if they're sent to the graveyard for whatever reason it's it's not like dark worlds it's not like fables where they have to be discarded it's when it's sent so stuff like hand destruction can be used I'm not advising you go ahead and use that. They also carry flip effects, so they carry two effects. The first flip effect of Shadow Lizard here is that he could target one card in the field and destroy it. Now, if he sends to the graveyard, say by Armageddon Knight or whatnot, then you can send another Shadow from your deck to your graveyard, which will trigger another Shadow, and you could set reset this and get more destruction going, and it's just really stupid. So, they kind of play, in a way, you want to break it down, they play like Hat. Hat being, um, I forgot the abbreviation myself, Artifact Trap Tricks Hands. But do it the other way, Hand Artifact Trap Tricks. It's pretty much in that analysis, it's pretty much how they have the countermeasures for everything you could do. These guys have pretty much the same thing. So it's very important to find which cards uh, side best against them. And this is Shadow Dragon. You could target one card your opponent controls, return to the hand, and then if you basically send it to the graveyard by discarding, um, milling it, whatever the case may be, you know, goes from the top of your deck or your hand to the graveyard, Rageki Break is so good in this deck, um, then you could target one spell or trap on the field and destroy it. So they have spell and trap removal, monster removal from the first two cards alone. Uh, Shadow Hedgehog here, when he's fit, uh, flipped, you can search one Shadow spell or trap to your hand and you know, get to your hand. If he's discarded, then you can add one Shadow monster from your deck to your hand. So they have hand reoccurrence. They're not going to lose out on never really having a monster. Hmm. Pardon me. Things like Armageddon Knight are going to be super useful to triggering these guys' effect besides Raigeki Break. Um, a lot of people, from what I can understand, are saying that the pure version, meaning that there's not too many lights in it, is the best version playing it, kind of like... Um, Evil Swarm, which we'll get to in a minute. But this is Shadow Falcon. You can target one Shadow monster in your graveyard, except Shadow Falcon, and it puts it face down. Now, these are once per turn effects, so that does kind of balance them to an extent. But you're going to need a bunch of monsters. Like, you're going to need something. I mean, Pujins may still have a good matchup when they bring out Susano, but otherwise, not going to look really good. Uh, if this card sent to the graveyard, you can special this card from your graveyard face down and trigger its whole effect again. Really annoying stuff. Um,. This one's also a tuner, so they do have synchro capabilities. They do obviously carry synchro, you know, capabilities. They have different levels, but pretty much lizard and the uh, I'm saying I'm about to say hedgehog. The lizard and the dragon carry the rank four abuse. I guess you want to put it that way. This is Shadow Roots. I almost jumped to the fusion. Uh, specialist card as an effect monster, and it's level nine. So <laughs> that's something. This card is still activated as a trap card. If there's summon this way, you can substitute this two for any one attribute fusion material monster list on a Shadow Fusion. So this helps them get over the. If I'm just running pure and I don't have lights, you play triple these, I guess. I don't know the full-on ratios because I haven't sat down and actually worked on the deck yet. Um, I've worked on one or two decks with Yugi 514, and that's pretty much it for the Shadows, like the Bujin and stuff. 
but otherwise not, I, I don't have the full on pure experience which we'll get I'll get to it eventually but um this substitute substitutes for any fusion and if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect you can target one shadow spill or trap in your graveyard and bring it to your hand so there's a lot of flexibility throughout the whole arch type each card carrying two effects not one so that's something to remember they carry two effects now this is El Shadol um, Nifflin, I'd say I can't pronounce it for shit. At least I'm honest about it. Now, she is light, so it's a totally different ball game if you're playing, you know, say Shadow and Prison Mirror to shut them down. I mean, the best thing about Shadow and Prison Mirror is that you can pretty much take out the field as long as they don't have Raigeki Breaker MST, which heavily I think will be played for them in the deck because it's going to trigger it and it's going to get rid of the back row. Um, but a quick breakdown, she's level H, 2800 stat, 2500 defense, so your Stardust cannot get over her in any form of way. It's one Shadow monster, one light monster, as I said before. They can use the Shadow roots to get this whole thing out, and it must be Fusion Summon first. If this card is special, you can send one Shadow card from your deck to the graveyard, which obviously is going to trigger them. And at the start damage step, if this card battles a special summon monster, the monster is immediately destroyed. So that is something huge right there. It basically says no cataster. Um, Armades is a good option to go against these guys, but if they get to the fusion, you're in trouble because it's got 2,800 stat power, and that's gonna be that's gonna be something that Armades can't get over normally unless it's power boosted. Um, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadow spell or trap in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. So it carries the flexibility of allowing you to grab back the fusion card which is shadow fusion and i don't okay i do have it here and this is you can only activate this is the card you can only activate one per turn you fusion summon one shadow fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or your side of the field it's fusion materials if this uh if your opponent controls and monster are special then they come out from the deck not from uh special summon it, if the if your opponent's monster is special summon I'm, I'm going through a little head and someone's going to get confused if your opponent's monster is special summon from the extra deck not just special summon has to be special from the extra deck then you can use monsters listed on that card from your main deck meaning any two shadows or shadow roots or whatever that whole thing it's really dumb it's a really really powerful card for the whole arch type oh there's also shadow beast which i didn't mention but that's level five now you go and read, but that that sucks, right? Actually not, because here's the basic combo that they'll do uh, to get this guy on the board is usually not him. They'll use Falcon to bring out Shadow Beast, and then Shadow Beast will be set, so you could draw to discard one. And honestly, if Dark Worlds had a way of playing this, it would be it would just be oh my god, it'd be so good. But I think it's a cost effect. I'm not fully sure. I I'm pretty sure it's not, but. In my mind, I try to cover all bases. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can draw one card, and you can only use the effect once per turn. So pretty much, he's going to just give you another draw, and he's huge. You know, he's level 5. He's huge. 2200 stat. So if you could bring him out, he's going to clear the board of monsters for you. This is the other fusion. This is El Shadol Midrash, and this pretty much reminds me a lot of Ophion. You're going to see why in a sec here. Um, if you're new to the arch type, if not, then you just skip ahead. You don't got to listen to all this crap. Uh, must be fusion summon. Not that's crap, but you know, I'm giving you like a breakdown of the whole thing. It's one Shadol monster, one dark monster, and then neither player can special summon more than once per turn. Why this card is face up on the field? So immediately that stops 90% of exceed plays. Not every single exceed play is going to be stopped by this card. But a good chunk of them is going to be. So that 101 you want to make, you better have two normal summons. Um, double summon may become a little bit more popular. I don't agree with that. Whole thing, um, things like Kage Takage are going to just be put to the wayside for a little while. You can, you're only going to have the one special summon. So if they saw warning it, that's when you take your, your hand to your head and you, you cry in a corner. Um, neither player can special up to once per turn. When this card is face up on the field. So if you book a moon it, problem solved. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadow spell card, uh, spell or trap, and add that target to your hand. So it has that reoccurrence again. Level 5. Um, the dragon that she's riding looks like out of Legend of Zelda. That's going to be the first thing off my mind. But I believe it's actually Shadow Beast. I may be wrong about that. It could be another Shadow. I'm not fully sure. I do know that's Go uh, Gusto. I want to say Prika, but I'm not fully sure. But there's a lot of, you know, they 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 borrow monsters. Um, 
they borrow a lot of monsters. A lot of these are just like former Gustos, little like flavor flavor info for you. But with that said, now we got the breakdown, now we understand how these guys work, how they want to win the game. Let's go straight into the side cards. Okay, now we're on to the side cards. So, probably one of the oldest choices ever is Nobleman or Crossout. And I will be the first to admit, I forgot the secondary effect removes everything from the main deck too. I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. I forgot about that. It is a great option to use against Shadow Dolls because as in the breakdown, how I broke it down, but if you're new to Shadow Dolls, then you need that. If not, then you already understand it. They're all pretty much going to set first and then ask questions later. So pretty much you hit Falcon, you're going to hit the Reoccurrence. You hit the Lizard, you're going to hit the destruction of the cards on board. You hit the Dragon, you're going to stop the back row hate, you know, where they can hit your back row easier. Um, if you hit the dragon, you're going to hit the draw power. So in some form of way, you're going to hit something that's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt them hard. Um, for those who don't know fully what this card is, target one face down monster on the field, destroy that card, uh, destroy that target, and if you do, banish it instead of sending it to the graveyard. And then if you do, if it was a flip effect monster, both players reveal from their main deck and banish all cards with that monster's name from both decks. So in the mirror match, this one's going to hurt you a lot. Mirror match is a nightmare, I'm not going to lie. It is a fucking nightmare. That's the best way to say it. Anyone who's played mirror match at Halls, it is a fucking nightmare. Um, Abyss Dweller. No matter how much time goes on in this power creeping game, I, I guess someone's going to want me to say it that way. But honestly, as the game evolves is what I see it as, not really power creep, even though it is there. We'll have a whole another video for, to break down power creep. But the whole point is, as this game evolves, Abyss Dweller gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's hilarious how such a little exceed gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So the, don't expect it to drop price anytime soon. Um, but getting to the point, basically, when they start activating their secondary effects into the graveyard, you just negate them out. And that does put in some work against them, I'm not going to lie, it really does. Now, some of you may just think, hey, look, Abyss Dweller and Nobleman Crossout, it's perfect, right? Still got to deal with their fusions, because you're going to have Abyss Dweller that's been special summoned from the extra deck, and then that's something that they can basically use to get over you. Um, honestly, one of the funnier things to do is run Monarchs. I know not everyone's going to want to run Monarchs, but they have a great matchup against Shadow Dolls, and that's something I just wanted to mention. So basically, if you're running something, and this is where it becomes relevant to the video, if you're running something like Heretics, where it's a tribute engine-based thing, or you could just constantly special summon, this in uh, Majesty's Fiend, and I totally forgot to put Majesty's Fiend in, which we'll do in a sec. I'll do a quick edit to put it in. In three, two, okay. There's your magic out Honestly, Majesty's Fiend too. I do have to mention because it completely just shuts down all the monster effects. Still got to deal with their spell cards that can basically get over this guy. And when I say get over this guy, you're probably going, but Ryu, I don't understand. They can't use the monster effects. That's not the point. They can bring out one of their, you know, their their fusions and go from there. They could build momentum off that. They could shit. Uh, sh uh, shit. <laughs> they could set. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stuttering a little. They can set the Shadow Roots. Flip it up. Even though it's not going to really carry the effect. That's fine. Um, and I believe use that to make the the level 8 one. If not, then run just, just run effect rulers and they could do that. Or they could super poly. They're going to be siding too. you got to remember that. They're going to be siding stuff to side against you. But Majesty's Fiend is a great option, not just for Shadow Dolls, but pretty much to go against everything right now. 90%, you can just run this in your deck out of nowhere and be like, what the hell? You know what I mean? When you think about it, most decks do special summon super heavy, and it is pretty easy to basically get over. You know, the, I'm just going to tribute one and summon Majesty's Fiend, play Traps on, laugh my head off for an hour. This one, obviously, I've taken notice. I know you guys are messaging me. It's got a price rise. We're going to talk about it on the next stock market video. I don't know if this is out before stock market or before stock or after stock market. I will take a look at that. But this is the reason it's going up is because of Shadow Dolls. It's Skullmeister. Now, at this point, I would just say, well, get. 
<laughs> Star Trek Blast needs a complete reprint. They need to do a complete set reprint. Think like Dra um, Dark Legends or Dark no Dark Beginnings. Dark Beginnings. Think Dark Beginnings and just re complete. Just instead of having 30 packs, just Star Strike Blast. Put it in everything for a month. And, and every pack contain all the card cards to get prompt solved. I mean, that pack needs the reprints. But that's a side note. During either player's turn, when a card effect is activated in your opponent's graveyard, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and negate the effect. Now, I know other Yu Gi Tubers may not agree with me on this, that's perfectly fine. But I always talk pros and cons. The pro is that it can defend your life points. Something like DD Crow, which is on here, relax, it's on here is a great option regardless but Skullmeister carries with it and we have to keep in mind too that this is also a pro and a con is that things like soul charge we can bring it back and then overlay it to a rank four but in that same aspect we're not talking banless here but we do have to mention this we don't know what Konami's gonna do when it comes to said cards and we don't know if soul charge will get hit or whatever it's going to be if that's even going to be a viable option. I do have to say it that way, not to cover my own ass, but to make a argument that someone may make at another point in time. It's just to make things clear. <laughs> just to make things clear. We are we are ever changing in in a meta game, and we have to adapt, or we have to go extinct for a little while. It's one of the two. But Skullmeister is a great option against them because when they activate the secondary effects, you just discard it and problem solved. If they don't want to activate that, that's fine. You know, just summon it and go to a pissed dweller. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty much just that. It's great. But forty dollars, I don't know. We'll talk about that in the stock market. Um, Shadow and Prison Mirror. This one, some of you may again be like, well, they got this counter. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. They always will have something to counter your counter. You must counter their counter play two of them. You could play Skill Drain, but the problem with Skill Drain is that they have the graveyard effect, so then in that aspect, you would have to play something like Skullmeister still to get over the graveyard effects, or flip up Soul Drain, which is another great option, but again, not here because it's limited. Shadow and Prison Mirror, however, is not limited, and it hits more than just Shadows. Now, it's not going to hit the level 8 Shadow. That's fine. We can deal with that with a quick 101, Extinction Knight, Dire Wolf, just whatever to get it off the board. Gaga, oh, can't Gaga Cowboy that because it'll automatically get destroyed. Shadow and Prison Mirror, however, will stop pretty much 99% of Shadows. Effects, not deck. Effects. In, in this aspect, I do see them running in their side deck to basically counter our counters. I guess that would be the whole aspect of it. Is stuff like Imperial Iron Wall, MSTs, Super Polys, things of that sort to basically counter our counters. So we have to counter those counters with better counters, but it's going to get really annoying really fast, I know. Um, but Shadow and Prism Mirror, honestly, is one of the better options because you could just flip it up when they try to, you know, stun you and they'd be like, ha-ha, success, and then just take them out, much damage on the board. I think that's one of the key aspects to winning against Shadows is basically Shadow and Prism on their turn, flip up a trap stun, go nuts, and just win the game. But then again, that same aspect, that situation may not work. It comes down to what you could do in that situation. They're a tough deck to beat. Banish of the Radiance, my best friend ever since Anti met, I won't lie. Um, no, honestly, he does stop a lot of things because instead of going to the graveyard, they're going to be banished. So this plus back row equals hilarious. So play Anti Meta, win game. You know, you could also say, well, Vandy's emptiness. That's another option. But that only stops the special summoning, and again, they have those graveyard effects that get around that. Banisher, however, is one of the stronger options to use against them because it just shuts down everything that they are about, which is the graveyard and their fields. Now, you can't really just shut down their field without basically taking out the monsters, but basically protect Banisher and then just keep taking out their monsters. So let's say in this aspect we have safe zone, a set trap stun, and a Banisher in defense mode with a Kaiku or whatever in attack mode, something that has a lot of attack power, and you just keep ramming them. Now, when they MST your safe zone, that's why you want to have the trap zone because you keep yourself safe and it also stops the Shadow roots that they would want to use to come out. Just saying, not always going to happen, but it's, you know, one of the other things. So, one of the best aspects to learning how fully, I just want to mention this real quick, 
to side again said broken deck is learn said broken deck. Go on Dead Pro and watch it. Go on Pojo forums and see what people are saying, what they're using in the deck. Break it down um, like I did in the beginning of the video, and that's why the analysis is such an important key aspect to this video now, is to break it down to understand each component to the deck. And that may be overthinking it, maybe not everyone has that time, but if you got the time to watch the video, then I could do it for you and problem solved. That's why I just wanted to say real quick, though. DD Crow is another great option because you could just use it when they're sent to the graveyard. Not the best option, but still an option. This is one of my favorites, Tyson Pan. I freaking love you for bringing this up a while ago. And that's Snake Wings, friend of mine, um, on YouTube. So you can go check him out. Just tell him thanks. This is Curse Seal of the Forbidden. Now, some of you are going, oh boy. you got to have a spell card in your hand. That's a negative. But you discard one spell card, negate the activation effect of the spell card, and destroy it. Your opponent cannot activate spell cards with the same name during the rest of the duel. Negate that MST. Negate that Dark Hole. Negate that Noble Man Cross Out. It works both ways, not just one way. Negate that Shadow Fusion. That's the one you really want to negate. If you're able to just completely shut off Shadow Fusion, you take out a good chunk of their power. Their extra deck is just completely shut down. Not all of it, just the fusions. Which means, now if you had Majesty's Fiends with this shit, you pretty much have won the game. Not to sound that way. You still have to defend Majesty's Fiend from back row, but you pretty much have won the game. There goes that tier 0 status out the window. All it takes is a little creativity and a little know-how. But this is one of the best sleeper side cards. Now, the only again, the only problem is you need to discard a spell card, meaning that playing higher spell cards will benefit you in the long run for this. There's also Royal Decree, but Royal Decree doesn't really do much against Shadow Dolls. They're going to just get it off the board. This is one of the better options. If you're able to keep it on the board... You know, just say we're going to run these, you know, these three in Skullmeister. If you're able to run those four in an extra deck, you can completely shut down Shadal. It's without question. And it is mean. It is, you know, it is nasty of a thing to do, but it'll win your games. And it's one of the better side deck cards. So if I inspired you, go, go on eBay. They're like 99 cents. This is another one. Uh, this one doesn't require you to discard that. This only hits the graveyard again. Activate by discarding one card. Effects that activate in the graveyard are negated that turn. So, it's pretty nifty. Anyway, that's everything. And that that's still my favorite on this whole thing. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more. If you like what you saw, the deck analysis and everything. We're going to be doing these monthly. So, if there is... And this is where the comment section comes in. If you feel, A, I left out anything that should be cited, put in the comments. That's what this is. It. That's what this is. It's a discussion video. We create a discussion pool in the comments, and we do a breakdown and become better players and stuff for it. And it's just fun. Two, if you have a deck request, leave that in the comments below as well. I promise you I will get to it. I, will, I always respond to everyone I possibly can. Three, before I forget... There'll be another guide to your side next month, but you guys, I think I already said that. Okay, I, I said we're going to move on. F three will be, if you if you enjoyed the video, and you know someone who's having a problem with Shadows, and they're just like frustrated with the game, they're about to quit, send them this video. Show them, you know, just say, okay, go straight to the half part. You don't need the first part, because that's a deck analysis, unless you really want to watch. The deck analysis, so you can watch the video backwards, and that'd be fine too, I guess. You know, that's a thing that people do. But anyway... I'm ready for the video council. Thank you for, again for taking time every day to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. And I hope you guys are part of the discussion in the comments because it means a lot. Because we can basically take down shit dolls. Yeah. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next video. As always, I'm ready for the video council. Peace.